through the day. So all of that impacts your cost. Product distribution, O&M costs, operating and maintenance costs, off hours operations, because in your lease we do require you to stay open until that last flight leaves to make sure our passengers have um, the kind of quality experience and any kinds of goods and services that they may need to carry on the rest of their flight. And that means labor hours and a lot of times short notice. But we do work with a core group of concessionaires as much as we can to make sure that they know uh, that they'll be on call. So we do try to work with you on that. Banking, uh, I tell you there's many a times I see people carrying around these little bags and I know what they're doing. but. That can be a challenge in regards to getting change and moving your money around, as well as airline gate utilization. Weather might change, as Jeff had mentioned. Um, may have been some bad weather and gates are backed up. So instead of them uh, deplaning right in front of your location, oops, they're going to go down three or four gates down. So that is their operational schedule, and that's something that is unforeseen and things that we cannot control. And then also surety bonds and um, deposits that you'll have to have on hand. So what does that mean? To give you a little bit more flavor in regards to kind of what we know, to give you a little bit of a barometer, when we talk about um, some cost, there are some costs as relates to your uh, vehicular access charges. It's about $1,100 per person per year. Um, new badge fingerprinting, uh, that's $110 dollars per person, badge renewal every 30 day, within 30 days, um, $60 per person, tran uh, employee transportation if you need it, um, operating and maintenance charge, $20.60 per square foot per year, administration fees, um, and marketing assessment. So those are some of those things that are underneath that rock that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of because those were some of the feedback items that we got from Debrief on, gee, well, well, how much does it cost to do business here? This is a little bit of a flavor in addition to your rental payments that there will be requirements. And um, there's also other charges that may appear throughout the term of the agreement and they may include construction permit fees based on the value of your construction, any kind of renovation that you may have to do, badge replacements due to loss, damage, or theft. So once you get this little badge, your employee gets these badges, it costs money if they lose them. So it's very important that they keep up with them. Um, late charges and penalties, um, our rental payment structure, it's not on a 30 days, it's on a 20 day. So there's little uniqueness about our environment that you need to be aware of that could impact your cost. So that's giving you the full flavor. There's some great opportunities at the airport. We'd like for all of you to participate, but we also want you to know that um, there are some costs and things that you should consider as you uh, consider doing business at the airport. So in summary, we are a great place. DFW is on the move. We've got um, currently 200 shops and, and restaurants. And uh, at the end of the day, we'll probably, once trip is all over, we'll have about 200. Today, we have about 230 locations. Uh, by the time the trip is done, we'll have less than that, about 208 locations. Uh, we have close to 60 million passengers that make their way to DFW on an annual basis, and we are looking to grow that over uh, the next year and next years to come. Um, our passengers have a strong af um, affinity to high-end brands, just given some of their, their income levels. They're also looking for very specific needs uh, to make sure that their travel experience is a great one. And um, TRIP affords us an opportunity to really reshape the concessions program. We are moving our concessions locations into the pathways of where our passengers travel so that you'll have that critical mass going by your location instead of being so spread out. We're looking on how do we kind of chunk things together so it does feel like an overall retail mall experience. And with that, are there any questions? Wow. 
Oh, 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 here's one, here's one, here's one. Somebody, where's the mic? Where's the mic? Can you share your Just a second. Everything will be posted. Oh, okay. It'll be posted on our website. www.dfw airport forward slash opportunities. It's written down. Do we have those little cards? We don't. But we showed that initially. We will make sure that you know exactly where to go because that's where you need to go to get all the information. We post everything that we talk about. Okay? Okay, Ron, take it away. Great crowd. It's great to see everybody here. Kind of curious, how many are here for the, key, the concessions part of it? All right, how many are for Wi-Fi? Fantastic. Now, there's some fantastic business opportunities out here, and I'm going to go over some aspects of uh, putting together a proposal. Uh, one of the things I want to make clear is that I, I recognize that as professional companies, you've submitted dozens of proposals. You've written dozens of proposals. So. This is not meant to replace what you know, it is meant to supplement what you know and to get a flavor for how a proposal for DFW Airport is somewhat unique and, and what we're looking for uh, when you put together a proposal uh, for either the concessions piece or the Wi-Fi content management piece. And some of the information I'm going to give to you seems pretty common sense and it is, but we're going to go over it anyway because as a college professor once told me you're responsible for what you read and you're responsible for what you don't read. So this is not meant to, to uh, supplement, I mean, it's just meant to supplement, not replace your responsibility for reviewing all the proposal requirements and to prepare a proposal that conforms to the requirements. First of all, Make sure that you provide the information that we are asking for in the properly tabbed sections. Uh, the experience that we had with Terminal A is that we received 101 proposals. Now that's quite a challenge for DFW Airport staff to review all of that information yes. and to try to make the very best recommendation to our board for uh, lease award of, of uh, a concession or for Wi-Fi content management. And one of the important aspects of reviewing data and comparing your company's approach to work and approach to providing a concession as to your competitors is that we look at the individual tab sections and make comparisons. How is one company going to do this aspect of the work versus another company? So it's very important that your proposal is well organized and organized in the, based on the instructions that we have provided in the RFP. Oh, yeah, there it is. Adhere to the page limits. Now, if you have a marketing department, they don't know what page limits are. I mean, they really don't. They, they've got lots of data, and they frankly have got a lot of information, and sometimes it's very generic information about your company. And that's great information, but it may not always be relevant for with regards to the concessions or the Wi-Fi content management piece of what the airport is requesting. So it's very important that your information is very targeted not just to the kinds of services or the concessions or the Wi-Fi content management that you're proposing, but it's very specific to an airport environment. It is unique. And so we want to have an understanding of how your concept works in an airport environment. So again, adhere to the page limits and make sure that we have an understanding of how your work will apply to the DFW airport. Proposal deposit. It is a requirement that you submit a proposal deposit and that information is contained in the RFP. Any proposal that is submitted without the proper deposit will be rejected. So it's very important that that is included with your proposal. It cannot be submitted after the fact. We have set, established also some deadlines for questions. I mean, there has to be some kind of cutoff date and time where we can receive questions from interested parties. And we want your questions. We want your input. Frankly, we want your recommendations. And not to say that we're always going to give you the answer you want to hear, 
But we need to have that information so that we're crafting the very best RFP and that you can craft the very best proposal for the airport board and for the traveling public. So uh, make sure that if you've got questions that you submit them in writing. And the contact information, may it be Sanji Killian for the concessions at terminals B and E, or Miriam Seymour for the Wi-Fi content management. Make sure you email to the proper person your questions and your recommendations. There's a reason why this is in red, because late proposals will not be accepted. And I emphasize that only because we have received in the past, not only for procurements, but also for concession opportunities, late proposals. And 100% of the time, they thought they had a great reason for why their proposal was late. And 100% of the time, the late proposal was not accepted. And we've heard every reason in the world. I can go over and over that, but I'm not gonna spend the time. Frankly, if your proposal's late, it will not be accepted. I urge you to make sure and get your proposal in early. Frankly, get it in a day early. You never know what traffic's gonna be like at DFW, around DFW Airport. With all this construction going on, uh, it can be quite challenging. So uh, if you use a third party company, I strongly suggest that you submit that two days prior to the proposal due date and time. Uh, we recently had a company that uh, submitted a proposal late because the driver got lost. And so even though the company had paid for next morning delivery, they didn't get next morning delivery. And the proposal was late and the proposal was not accepted. So very important, make arrangements to get it here early, not late. Now, as I mentioned before, for Terminal A, we received 101 proposals. And that's a, quite a challenging task for a group of individuals, senior executives and senior staff at DFW Airport to review all of these proposals. So you need to make sure that it's easy to follow and that what the content that you're putting in your proposal matches to the goals and objectives and uh, the requirements that we have placed with regards to how your concept or uh, your Wi-Fi content management is going to work at DFW Airport. Uh, don't be too dependent upon broad general marketing language. Again, I know a lot of times people have what I would call templates, uh, very standardized language, and, and again, some of that information is very relevant and could work very well for our proposals, but uh, be very mindful that you need to be very specific to how your proposal is going to work in an airport environment so that we have an understanding of how it will be successful, not only financially, but also in meeting the expectations of our passengers throughout the airport. Again, just try to avoid some of the generic and canned language that you often find in some templates uh, for proposals. Now, again, I'm not here to tell you word for word how to write a proposal because I, I do think that many of you have great experience in doing that, but I do want to hit a few high points. Um, make sure your proposal conforms to the minimum requirements. Obviously, if you don't have a proposal that meets the minimum requirements, it is at risk of being disqualified. And if you, it's not going to be disqualified, at the very least, it has, uh, it's at risk for being downscored. And when you look at the fact that we had 101 proposals and that approximately one third of those proposals were accepted for award, you've got quite a challenge. Uh, you got a lot of competition, I got a lot of competition out there and you need to make sure that you are writing the very best proposal. Uh, you only have really a, a, it's like that old saying, you only have a, a have a, you only get a second chance to make a good first impression. And so you need to make sure your initial proposal really hits it out of the park. That brings all the requirements that we need 
and for our customers into your proposal, either maybe for 